There's a, a custom that 30 days before the holiday, we start learning about the holiday. And uh, <coughs> this custom was uh, started in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, and it was never cancelled. And it's extremely important that 30 days before the holiday, we learn about the halachot, we learn about the, how to prepare ourselves. So, Baruch Hashem, we had already a few classes how to prepare ourselves mystically. You can find them online, they went already online. Very good classes to mystically know what you need to prepare for Pesach. So now we're going to learn a little bit about uh, halachot, which is very important. There's a lot more to learn. It's the holiday that has, I think, the most halachot to learn before, just because all of the kashering of all the utensils and preparing the house. So we're not going to have much time before Pesach to go through everything, but we'll go through the, some important things. And we'll see how much we'll be able to do. I also asked in the previous classes if you to make a, a, a vote till what day you want to go. I mean, I'm fine with going till the, the Thursday before Pesach, but I know a lot of people already left, a lot of people are already busy for Pesach. So if you think you cannot make it in the last week before Pesach, let me know, then we're not going to schedule classes. <coughs> but anyways, let's start. Ma'ot chitim ve'mivtza matza. There's a minhag. Mekubal b'chol Yisrael, she'chol k'ilah v'k'ilah gova mechavereh ma'ot chitim le'pesach. It's a minhag that every congregation and every k'ilah, they gather certain money. They collect money. And this is called ma'ot chitim. And usually the rabbi will collect it or the gabai of the shul. But they collect um, amount of money. And this is called Ma'ot Chitim, and this is given And this is given to the poor people of the city to buy Matzot. We have a fund like that. If you need, if you know anyone who needs, let me know, because I have a fund for Ma'ot Chitim. And if you want to participate, then let me know also. <coughs> but we have a bunch, a couple dozen families here in Tzfat that we support. So if you know anyone that needs money for Matzot or for wine, of a food, then you can let me know personally. What happens if you have a fund and you gave it out before Pesach and then after Pesach you have some uh, extras? Then you spread it out throughout the poor people for the rest of the, for the things they need for the holiday. <coughs> now today is Rosh Chodesh. So we start a few things today on Rosh Chodesh. And one of them, Bechol Rosh Chodesh. Bechol Chodesh Nisan En Amrim Tachanun. So I know for many people it's a very happy month because we don't have to say Tachanun now. We just saved ourselves half an hour of prayers every day. So for some people it's a very uh, happy day. When you tell them no Tachanun, ah, I saved three minutes on my prayer today. So the whole month of, of Nisan, we don't say Tachanun. We don't say La Mantzeach Ya'ancha. This can be found in the, some of the Sidurim. Not all the Sidurim do that. And also, we don't say Keler Chapaim on Mondays and Thursday. For the ones who pray Shacharit, if you notice that on Monday and Thursday, when we take the Sefer Torah out, then we add another whole addition for Monday and Thursday, and that is a long part, part of the Tachanun. So that we also don't say. We also don't say Ava Rachamim v'tzidkatcha on Shabbos. And if you pray Mincha on Shabbos, we say v'tzidkatcha after Shmona Yisre. And uh, during uh, Shacharit, we say Ava Rachamim. All these things, usually we do during the week. We say Tachanun. On the month of Nisan, we don't say Tachanun. And this is including also Sfira Ek, Kriyat Shema Lamita. There's a part where we say Tachanun. On Nisan, we don't say that. <coughs> we do not fast at all during the month of Nisan. Whoever is a Bechor, who is a firstborn, does fast on Pesach. This is for men, not for women. Anyone who gets married during the month of Nisan does fast on the day of their, uh, of their Chupa. 
אפילו, אבל לא באיסרו חג. What happens if they do get married today on a ראש חודש, they still fast, which is usually not custom to fast, אבל לא באיסרו חג, the only time you don't fast if you are חתן אין הכלה, is on איסרו חג, the day after פסח. We have another minhag, we talked about it last week, and we talked about it during Shabbat. נוהגים מראש חודש ואילך לקרוא אחרי תפילת שחרית פרשת הנאסי, שהקריב באותו יום. Some congregations, they have the minhag, the custom, to read after שחרית, the paragraph, the part from the weekly portion that is called הנאסי. And we spoke about it last week, but just to, to remind that in ראש חודש ניסן was the inauguration of the Mishkan. And every day, one of the Nesim, one of the presidents, the leaders of each tribe, they brought a sacrifice, and they brought presents, and there was a whole ceremony. So we have the Minhag, that we read that portion from the Torah every day, every Rosh uh, Chodesh, then on, on, on second day of, of uh, Nisan, the third day of Nisan, till the 13th day of Nisan. We spoke about... The, the spiritual part of it, because that was last class, some of you were not here, we, we spoke about how each one of us has a connection to a certain tribe, and we're all interconnected in some way or another. So every day that we read it, we, do, we affect a certain part of our neshama that is connected to one of the tribes. So spiritually it's a very uplifting thing. The Rizal actually explains the connection, how when you read it, you, you, you elevate a piece of your neshama that is connected, even if it's not from your tribe, we're all connected to one of the tribes, you're elevating a piece of your neshama. If you see there's a, in some of the sidurim, we say a certain yehi ratzon, and we say, im animi shevet so and so, if I'm from this uh, tribe, we spoke about it on Sunday, and we mentioned how the Rizal says that we don't know from which tribes we are. So, spiritually it's a very important thing to do, If you don't have it in your Siddur and you want to do it, you can probably find many Siddurim that do have it. <coughs> so every day we read one portion of the, the weekly, part, weekly portion from the Nesim. And on the 13th day we read a portion that is called Zot Chanukat HaMizbeach. And uh, this is again from the time of the inauguration of the Tabernacle. Another thing, This is another thing, it's a custom, you don't have to do it, like I told you, it's just good for, it's spiritually, it's a very special thing, is we read a certain Yehir Ratzon, and again, you can find it in some of the Sidurim, if you don't have it, then uh, the Sidur of the Nosach of the Arizal, he has it. Spiritually, it's a very powerful thing for our Neshama. Bechlal, we're going to learn today in the class about Chodesh uh, Nisan, all sorts of special powers that the month of Nisan has, and we're going to more understand the reason why we do that. Another thing we do in, in the month of Nisan, anyone who goes out to the fields and see a beautiful tree, a tree that gives fruit, that they start blooming in the month of Nisan. We have a certain bracha that we say. It's called Birkat Ha'ilanot. And the bracha that we say is, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Shelo Chisar Ba'olamo Klum, Ovara Bo Briot Tovot, Vilanot Tovot, Leanot Ba'em Bnei Adam. It's a special bracha that we say. I know it's a very simple thing, and it sounds like a very mundane thing, where there are congregations that are create a whole uh, thing around it. And they go to a, to a, a field, or a forest, or to a moshav, or they go out and they make a whole thing, and they read Tehilim, and they... They, they do a very special thing around it. Uh, if you don't join such a congregation, just find a tree that bears fruit, that has new uh, flowers, and... Excuse me? Yeah. And, and uh, you want to you wanna make sure that it has already flowers. Now it's uh, a little bit cold. Not all the trees bring out flowers. And... Uh, It's a very special mitzvah. It's very important to make sure that you're making, it, you're making the bracha on a tree that bears fruit that you can eat. You cannot do it on a tree that doesn't have fruit that you don't eat. 
ולא לנות סרק, הם לא נותנים טריז, הם לא נותנים אף פרוט על כל. המדקדקים, המדקדקים מקפידים לברך על שתי אילנות המוציאים פרחים. The ones who are very particular, they make sure that they say the bracha on two trees, exactly what you just said. בדיעבד יכול לברך גם כשיש רק אילן אחד. After the fact, if there's only one tree, it's also fine. But the ones who are taking it an extra step, that's why I said that some congregation, they go to a field or to a moshav, that there's a lot, a lot of trees. If you're stuck and you, the time ran out, then you only found one tree, that's also good, that's with the Eved. But Milchatchila, you want to find a place that has two trees, that you want to see a little bit of the flowers blooming, and it must be a tree that bears fruit. And, and we spoke about it last week, I don't want to uh, uh, repeat again, but in Nisan there's a certain power, the power of what's called Hitchadshut, of rebirth. And it affects the entire year. That's something we're going to talk about in the class later on about Nisan. We spoke about it two weeks ago in the class about Adar, how Adar is the last month of the year. Because the, the Nisan, biblically, that's the Rosh Hashanah, that's the first month of the, of the year. And mystically, we explained that in the previous class also, that there's a, a contradiction, there's a machloket, a fight, an argument in the Gemara, what month the year was created. And there's two opinions. One opinion says that the year, the world was created in Tishrei, and the other opinion says the world was created in Nisan. Comes the Rizal and says, no, there's no, there's no contradiction. They're both right. The physical part of the world was created in Tishrei, but the Neshama, the soul of the world, was created in Nisan. So the month of Nisan is not only that it's Rosh Hashanah Lachodashim, it's the head of the year of, for the month, but it has the power in it, we know that it's called Rosh Hashanah, not Chilat Hashanah. Like today it's called Rosh Chodesh, it does, it's not called Chilat Chodesh. Chilat should, should have been called Chilat Chodesh, the beginning of the month. Or Chilat Hashanah, the beginning of the year. But it's called Rosh Chodesh, the head of the month, the head of the year, because everything is included in the head. So in Rosh Chodesh Nisan or any of the Rosh Chodesh, the head of the month is including the entire month is included in that day. So the first day of Nisan, it's the head of all the month, of all the entire year, hasn't it a very special power of rebirth that in the month of Nisan I can tap into and, and, and rejuvenate and take this power of growth from the power of the month that takes me through the, through the entire year. That's another reason, one out of many, why we do say this Parashat Anasi, is, I, didn't, I don't, know, don't want to repeat it from the previous class, but it's important that you know, that Rizal explains that every day that I read the Parsha of the Nasi, it arouses, it ignites a certain nitzot, a, a spark in my neshama that is connected to one of the tribes. Also, because the month of Nisan is the first month, the biblical calendar, then every day that I read the Nasi, I'm basically blessing and enlightening and giving, giving power to every month of the year. So Aleph Nisan will correspond to the month of Nisan. Bet Nisan will be already for Iyar. Gimel Nisan will be for Sivan and so forth. So the 14th days in the beginning of the month of Nisan are very, very powerful. That, that you, you, we're going to talk about it in the next class, but you want to make sure that the first 14 days of Nisan, Nisan you are focused on the right thing, that you, you're going to be able to, to, to benefit from each day of the, of the month and, and that will take you for the entire year, Bezat Hashem. So we don't have this minhag yet, but uh, maybe we should. I know I have a friend who has a congregation and he takes everybody on a bus and they go to one of the yeshuvim here in the north and they, uh, they go to what's called a mata, a place where they have a lot of uh, uh, trees that they start bearing fruit and flowers in Nisan. They make a whole thing out of it. So maybe we should also initiate something like that. Get a hop on a van and go. But if we don't do that, then just know that you should find yourself a... Excuse me? 
Yeah, so maybe you'll invite us and we'll do a, <laughs> a whole thing out of it. But you have a question? Wow. Right now in the sky? You, you can see it? They're migrating now, they're coming back. Baruch Hashem. Beautiful. There is a place here in Emeka Hula where they have all the, all the bird, the birds pass there, it's beautiful. They used to take us in the field trips in school. They used to go there and see thousands, they, for whatever reason, that's where they pass. So Bezat Hashem, try not to miss this uh, special bracha of Birkat Ha'ilanot. Next, Shabbat HaGadol. Next Shabbat is going to be Shabbat HaGadol. The Shabbat Shalifnei Pesach Nikra Shabbat HaGadol. The Shabbos before Pesach, which will be not this coming Shabbat, the following Shabbat. It's called Shabbat HaGadol, the great Shabbat. Lefishin Esa Bones Gadol. Why? Because a very big miracle happened on that Shabbat. Pesach Mitzrayim Aya Mikho Ba'asiri. Benisan, Pesach in Mitzrayim was uh, it happened on the tenth day of Nisan, and that day was Shabbat. We learned about it last class about the Korban Pesach how they took, they were commanded about the Korban Pesach on the first day of Nisan, and on the tenth day of Nisan that's when they took the Korban Pesach and tied it to the bed, and that day was the Shabbat in that year. The Egyptians asked them, what are you doing? Why are you taking our gods and you're tying them to your beds? The Jews answered, This is our sacrifice now that we're going to sacrifice to our God. And the plague is going to be that Hashem is going to kill all the firstborns of Egypt. So the miracle was, first of all, they didn't kill them. Because the sheep and the goats were their, uh, well, the sheep was, were their idols. And they took the sheep and they, they, they tied them to the bed. And when the Egyptians came to ask them, what are you doing? They told them, we're going to kill it in four days and we're going to sacrifice it to our God. So the first miracle that they didn't kill them. The second miracle was, The firstborns went to their fathers and they all gathered together and they went to Paro. They said, hey, we're firstborns, let them go. If not, we're going we're to die. What happened when Paro says, go away, I don't want to? The firstborns of the Egyptians, they made a war against Paro and they killed a lot of his soldiers and a lot of the Egyptians. And that's why we read in the book of Tehillim, Lemakem Mitzchayim Mitzchayim Bivchoreihem. You notice that we read it in one of the chapters, 126. We say, That he hit the Egyptians with their own firstborns. And after, there was a big miracle. First of all, they didn't kill them. Second of all, they themselves initiated a war. And they fought amongst themselves. So they made a miracle out of that. This was on the Shabbat, before they went out of Mitzrayim, the Zikaron Adrot, for a memory for the rest of the generations, and they call it Shabbat HaGadol, the great Shabbat. There are other miracles in there. Shabbat HaGadol Shechar Be'erev Pesach Maftirim Ba Ve'arva. If Shabbat HaGadol is celebrated, that Motzei Shabbat is already Pesach, then we read a different Haftarah. This year we don't have it. We read the, the, the Aftarah that we read at the same time, at the usual time. Like I said, we, do, we read the regular Aftarah of the week. If it's a, a, a Shabbat that is preceding a couple days before Pesach, we, we have the custom that usually the rabbi of the shul, the congregation will teach a lot of halachot uh, for Pesach to be able to prepare. B'Shabbat HaGadol Achit Tivlat Mincha Omrim B'Nosach HaGadah Ma'avadim Ha'inu Ad L'Kaper Al Kod Avonotenu There's a minhag that after praying Mincha, and this is good for women too, is we read a big portion of the Haggadah. 
לפי שבשבת זו הייתה התחלת הגאולה ואני אשים וואי, because on this Shabbat started the גאולה. So wherever you are, it's a good minhag to do it, this is not a lacha, you, you, you're not obligated, but it's a very good thing to start already reading the, the, the Haggadah from <coughs> the part where it says Avadim Ainu till the part that it says Chaper Al Avonotenu, it's right before we wash for bread. אין אומרים ויהי נועם, on this Shabbat we do not say ויהי נועם, אין מוצאי שבת ואתה קדוש. Some congregations, some נוסחים, they have the custom of saying ויהי נועם ואתה קדוש in הבדלה. We don't say that. אם חל פסח באחד מימי החול, אבל אם חל פסח ביום השבת שלאחריו, מנהגנו לא אמרם. If it's done like this year, that Shabbat we're going to celebrate, and then פסח is on, on Monday night, then you, then you don't, don't say that. I mean, you do say that if it's, if, if Shabbos is Motzei Shabbat, that's when you don't say that. <coughs> Excuse me? No, this year uh, Pesach is on uh, Monday. What I was saying, if Pesach is, uh, is during the week, then we do say that. You do not say Ve'inoam Ve'ata Kadosh, when Shabbat, when Pesach is in Motzei Shabbat. Because we do Avdalah during uh, the Kiddush of the Seder. That's if, that's if it, um, uh, Pesach falls on Motzei Shabbat. This year it falls on Monday, we don't have that issue.